Hello and welcome to my reflections on uh, day 71. Um, stunning day, day 71, um, weather-wise, as is the start of, of day day 72. I just can't get over how fabulous it's been in the last couple of days. Um, what was day 71 all about? Um, day 71 talks about uh, ignorance is bliss. It talks about uh, ignoring knowledge is suffering and that only when we're, we're, we're sick of our suffering um, will we truly be free. Um, I had to read many times uh, and interesting enough so did Wayne as his reflections in the, in the book talk about that. Some of those things are really easy, some of those things are really easy to consider. Um, when, when we think we know everything, or we think we have a set of rules, or we think we have continued the answer to every question, we tend to bring it to bear in every situation in life. So, so ignorance being bliss, ignorance being a really cool thing, essentially means that we're not laying rules down, we're not trying to live our life by a rigid frame, is that we're open to every single situation that is presented to us in, in, in different ways. Um, Ignorance tends to, or, or not investing in the things that we know, tends not to limit our thinking. It allows us to still stay curious. It allows us to, to go with the flow. And that is an amazingly exciting thing, is to be curious, to allow us to be in a place and a space where we are creating things. Creating almost in every moment, creating our response to this person rather than it being the default one that we always have, allowing us to be able to birth new things and new ideas. Um, but the slight dichotomy then in that, sometimes on the face of it, is is ignoring the things that we know, because that creates suffering or creates sickness. Um, and, and actually, I think. Um, those two things aren't as uh, as much of a dichotomy as we as I initially perhaps thought they were. Um, we do know some stuff. Um, we can be, if we spend time ignoring our rules, incredibly intuitive about ourselves and our own health and our own well-being and own situations. And actually, the stuff that we probably know, you know, we probably know that too much alcohol makes us poorly. We probably know what sort of foods that we eat that make us feel uncomfortable. Um, we also know that, that actually some of the things that probably we do or the way that we live our life aren't physically, spiritually or emotionally healthy for us. So knowing those things, but ignoring that level of knowledge causes us to have um, a level of suffering um, on, on a physical level, a spiritual level or emotional level trying to continually fit square pegs into round holes rather than simply just allowing us to be able to to go with the flow a bit more but actually to genuinely tune in to to how we think and feel about about ourselves to really pay attention to what we experience about ourselves in the world sorry a little distracted there as something's going on in the background um i'll spin around and and show you because there's one of the the coolest zip lines in the world um, and of course now there's a man with a chainsaw um, but what else what else am I now currently competing with and just going with the flow around um, so the other thing is is that we only end up being truly healthy or truly fabulous when we end up in a place and a space where we end up being sick of our own sickness there's a phrase that we use quite often, uh, quite a lot in the world of, of coaching. We talk about this idea of secondary gain. And secondary gain is when having the problem is more beneficial to us than having the solution. And what does that mean? How does that manifest itself or occur? Is that, you know, sometimes actually the sympathy that comes with being a bit poorly, the, the relationship between... Um, not necessarily wanting to be poorly or wanting an illness, but actually the fact that we we somehow benefit from it. It's that little moment in life when suddenly, you know, the invite to go out for 
for Sunday lunch to see a family relation, relation that you don't particularly want to, you know, maybe one that you've married into, and suddenly now you go, oh, I feel a bit poorly. And so very often um, we all have friends, we've all got people in our life that somehow you can't help but feel that that probably at some level there is some benefit to them to, to having the problem, to having the issue. You know, we very often get a bit of an insight into that when they talk about always having this particular pattern in their life. And so actually, we're not always aware of those things because if we were aware of the benefits that we get from, you know, being sick, from having some emotional challenges or some physical challenges, and actually what we do is probably we'd stop it or we'd think or feel differently or we'd choose to think or feel differently. And so just maybe one of the things that we actually need to possibly start to pay attention to is, is notice what benefits uh, some of the challenges in our lives bring us is that when we are sick of being sick, when we see no benefit, when it no longer serves us, to be unhealthy then maybe we can end up in a place and a space where we are just free and to be free of our suffering so maybe today maybe if you end up with a bit of a sniffle or you find a bit of an ache and a pain is whilst on the face of it the answer to the question is is how does this help me how does this serve me in my life is always going to be no but just secretly find out ask yourself a little question what is it that currently would be of use? Is it the fact that you get to go and go for a massage? Is it that you get a little bit of TLC from someone? Just what is it? Um, and pay attention, tune into yourself and be aware of actually what is it that you do and don't do that really nurtures you. Tap into your inner wisdom, but also be incredibly creative and step outside of living locked into the rules that you've got for yourself. So be gentle with yourself today. Be humble with yourself. Forgive yourself. Embrace what you know. And smile. See you later.